photographic, photographic sense, and they they'd be willing to wait a little while longer. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, if after a while, I definitely start to feel bad. If I'm like, That's something that I do um, Monday or Tuesday after the con. I do a quick through of my images. I think that if, when I first look at my images, I look crap. But I go through them all, um, and that's like an editing thing. You should look over your image at least four or five times before you choose the image of that shoot because it's also a little bit of a bridge. You can start them, yeah, you can go back and start them again, and like, you know, and then you can color code them. Yeah, and then you can filter them. <laughs> um, but I make I, I take one image of each shoot that I've done and do a preview. So that way, if I'm like if I'm like a month and a half behind, at least they have that one image. Sort of they can know that the shoot went out really well and they don't have to worry about like if it doesn't work. Um, scheduling you should uh, cosplayers are notoriously late, which is is fine because they're most of the time putting the costume on for the first time and there's costume issues and things break and. You should sort of like leeway your schedule to know that your 30 minute shoot might actually be an hour and a half behind. But you know, work with them. Um, you know, I schedule, I do like, I'm doing shoots at 10, 1, 3, 5, and then I leave breaks in between so that if people come up to me at home, I can do that. Um, should I charge? This is a really hard question. This, this gets up on cosplay.com on a pretty consistent basis because uh, there are photographers who don't charge. And there are photographers who, choose, who do charge. I do charge, but only because um, 15 conventions, a hotel costs you $100. Travel costs you, I mean, if I fly somewhere, that's two to $300. I can't, I love doing this, but there's going to be a point where I need to start at least, you know, breaking even on this stuff. And that's a thing that I, I really mauled in my head for a good 10 months. Um, and I, at this point, it's more of like I have people who are willing to, that they want. They want, you know, they want the hour and my time, and they want the, sh the shot of that. You know, I when I charge for shoot, it's whatever they want. You know, if they want this particular shot of their skirt with the blowing in the wind, I'll do that. And 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 it's something that's it's sort of hard. There's a lot of photographers that charge, and there's a lot of photographers who don't charge. So you know, mull that over your head or make that decision. Um, I, I I love daylight. Daylight in the morning and the evening is the most prettiest light. It's orange and beautiful and glowy and uh, uh, sort of quite perfect. And artificial light is, is the devil. Um, but not necessarily. <laughs> Obviously this light, this light is very harsh and can make people look very unattractive, but can work for certain situations. Obviously, like, um, tungsten is green and very weird, um, and you can, uh, I'm sort of sickly looking, yeah. <laughs> but if you're shooting, like, style and how creepy it really works. <laughs> but now it'll be fine. So, um, I use a, I'm, I'm a flaw. I use this thing. This is my handy dandy stroke. You can buy all the fancy these things, or, weird, and I'm sure you've seen photographers like weird domes and things like that. It basically like diffuses the light. So, um, obviously it sits on my camera, you can sync this uh, to your camera and like go over here and you can have someone hold it. Um, you can bounce it off the ceilings, off the floor, um, and it, it can pop in single light, which is great. Um, you can use strobes. And strobes usually, uh, unless you have a lot of money, require electricity. Unless you have a battery pack and then carrying your battery pack around. But they can, yeah, I mean, I have two strobes with me now that I borrowed from uh, my university, but I haven't used them yet because location is really hard, especially in this hotel, and they have to be plugged into the wall at all times. So if I wanted to take them outside, not really possible. Um, I would love to have a little flash like this, but currently I am very poor. And so um, I don't. Yeah, just use natural light right now. Yeah, okay, this is um, this is an in flash. You can see that her face is blue-ish, um, which I thought was interesting. But so that I just popped a little flash in her and in her. And um, <laughs> and that's the one thing about strokes and flashes is that wigs are shiny and they show it. So take that into consideration. It's going to be an artificial like look. Um, so you know, think about that. Uh, um, I also 
to do a photo booth called Cost Clubs or Cost Friends, depending on um, where you go. Um, and basically, we go to like, I'd say five or six conventions a year right now, we're hoping to do more. And we set up a whole photo booth. We do a seamless, which is a roll of paper that has no seam. We usually choose a gray. We, usually choose, you know, we, get, we have four lights, two back lights, two front lights. We set up a whole crossing between the station. Um, uh, uh, we usually we do Katsu, we do Anime Next, you're at ASUN, um, Teco, um, we're at NAF. And, and it's, it's an amazing uh, sort of thing that you can, woo, I've got a studio suddenly. Obviously, the logistics of setting this up is ridiculous. Um, uh, there are two main people that, that myself and, and my friend, we run the booth. Um, but we have to have someone drive the stuff to us, thing, obviously. The, we do it with, uh, uh, with one of the guys who runs tech at a lot of these conventions. So we throw our stuff on his multiple else, like, crazy stage things and grab it at the con and he takes it back. But we need, you know, four or five people to help us develop. We need someone to help, you know, obviously I'm not working the booth all weekend, so we need another photographer. So it becomes a really big logistics issue. Um, obviously, if you're not with the con, you got to pay for your space. Where are you going to shoot? Um, and then if you're, sometimes you have to pay for electricity. So it's something where we, when we do it, we do it. We make it. We have a contract deal with it. With the convention. Obviously, when we when we're at Casacon, we're at Casacon's photo booth. So all the photos we take, we get to Casacon, and that's that's an agreement we make, and we're fine with that because it's more of a. You know, you, you the person pops in the booth, they, you take like three different versions of like the front, the back, the side. They look at their photos if they want to buy your photos, um, and you're in there, and it's uh, and it's a great cosplay meeting opportunity. It is, it is. I have met so many people doing that that I can like. Oh my my my. Obviously, look at the Silent Hills one. 7 p.m. My um my whatever my shift is over. I'm, I could do more shoots. I can meet people at cons. I can exchange information for future cons for not bringing the booth. So um, it's, it can be really cool, and it, it can also be like, I'm obviously 15 conventions. There's only 12 months in a year. And, you know, obviously, <laughs> there's a point where you're going to get tired. Um, and then, like, finding the right lighting. Uh, I feel bad that I keep on sharing my ideas. But, um, you know, you find out there. <laughs> So you know you want to you want to if you, you wanted something creepy and cool like find a cool lighting location at night um, you know find the right daylight uh, you know make the light work for the situation you know, obviously if you're shooting some like pretty poof princess peach thing you don't want to shoot unless they want it you're really interested in it don't do some like dark and creepy lighting don't you know which leads into locations. Wait. Wait. Conventions can be real, like they can have some amazing locations, or it can be a well, they can be like here. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> you know. But uh, I've found some great, creepy, cool locations. Um, which stairs? Mm. Find the stairs. You can do some really interesting things in stairs. They're usually white, so you can bounce light. There's no one in it. There, you know, you can have as much time as you want in them. So they can be creepy. They can be interesting. Um, there is a set of stairs. If you go down to the basement and you get off the elevator at the escalator and you go to like the right, there are those double doors. That's a set, that's a huge set of stairs. I think and they put people there like for the last grade, but there. Yes. Yeah. Line. Yeah. I don't think it's it's, a, it's an emergency exit, so I don't see why they would. And and yesterday I was opening doors. This is bad. I shouldn't tell you to do this. Open doors if they're unlocked. See what's in there. <laughs> Um, I did the other, I actually got kicked out, but, you know, they're not going to do anything. <coughs> it's always worth the risk. I mean, if they kick you out, mm. you just say, okay, I'll leave. Like, just comply. It's no big deal. But, like, you know, it's worth the risk to go in there and find something great. Yeah. So, like, yeah, we, I snuck into the garage, and you're supposed to be in the garage. But, but we, I got my got my image, and then they asked me. <laughs> so, um, I say it's, uh, uh, the, the princess poof dresses are so hard to find location for. And this place is actually um, really nice for in the in the, the not winter months. Um, if you go outside and to the right, there's like those trees. There's pretty vines along the wall. You know, there's flowers. Um, I, I last year at Anime was that it was October, so it wasn't cold yet. 